Well, welcome to another exciting episode with Leslie Spohr. And I'm Jeff Harrison with X's and O's and live with Leslie. Um, Leslie, it, I, I, was, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't stalking you, but I saw you had a lot of pictures on, I think it was Facebook, about you had just uh, gone on a little trip. I did. Back we, to nature. We took the weekend and went up to the central, up to the Sequoias. Cool. Kernville. Yeah. Now I noticed you put something on there and I almost, because I'm a bit of a smart aleck, if my parents were still alive, they, they would confess that, or they would support that. But you, you took a picture of a river and you said, wow, there's so much water. And I'm like, well, that's why they call it a river, <laughs> is because there's that, water in there. Except that we've been in an eight year drought and so many of the rivers and the lakes were sadly depleted and yeah. to see that much volume of water moving that fast was pretty amazing yeah so now it's all happy up there huh very happy cool except for the people who are drowning which is not happy. Yeah. people they told us i think the first three people we talked to up there said do not get in the river too fast too fast the current was too fast yeah a lot of snow up there and uh you know even today it's a little cool a little overcast and uh you know we're, we're having some really unique weather that i'm so happy to have me so, too 85 i'll take 85 all day long i love it so let's talk about uh did you have a good time up there we did we cool did. Yeah. now you guys stepped there what four or five days mm -hmm. cool now did you guys go camping Unless you want to count hotel rooms camping, no. Gotcha. So <laughs> glamping. 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 Yes, there glamping. you go. Yep, yep, cool. Yep. Well, welcome back. Uh, so you. it was probably a uh, deserved rest. It was, except we did 1,100 miles in, in those amount of days. So but now you, quite a few. But now, did Dan drive? We both drove. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, All right. Drove. So he trusts yeah. you to drive? He has no choice. I got you. Okay. <laughs> now, did you take his van or did you no, take your vehicle my, <laughs> my car. i joke about that because dan got a new vehicle and we kind of tease him because he doesn't want to be driving a, a mini van a mini van yeah. but it's a it's a it's his little workhorse so. utility van utility yeah, yeah it's a utility van so anyway yeah. so thank you for joining us uh leslie's got a really neat topic today if you don't mind i would just you know Take us through this. I saw your I saw your newsletter. By the way, if you're not uh, getting her newsletter once a week, you want to skip over to ConciergeBusinessSolutions.com and probably sign up for that because there's always some great information there. Some things we don't talk about on here. She uses that platform to communicate with your audience, right. and it's a great place to get additional tips. Maybe even go a little deeper than some of the things we talk about here. Uh, a little broader topic. So. Uh, go on over to ConciergeBusinessSolutions.com and sign up for that newsletter. In the newsletter, now, we've been talking about, or I should say on the program, we've been talking about for a while, Leslie, about, you know, things that will help move the needle for businesses. And one of them is, hey, being able to identify your, your perfect audience. I, ideal client. Yeah, yeah, your ideal client. But, you know, here's the thing I want to ask you today is like, okay. We hear it, it's like it's almost like a, a worn out cliche. Well, before you start going, get your ideal audience. But here's the thing. Now that I know who they are, how do I find them? Right, exactly. So I, I'm interested in, I'm, I'm excited to hear about what you have to say about this today. Well, yeah, I wanted to talk about target marketing and the number one way I think to help target or focus your efforts so that you can actually get quicker results. That's the big thing because when you're first uh, a small business owner, you first start out, you don't know where to go look for who you want to market to or how you want to get to them. And money is always a factor, right? We don't. You know, we don't have a lot of cash in our pocket. We don't know how to spend it to, in order to get the best returns. So I wanted to give you some tips today on how best to do that. So one of those, number four on the list, I'm going to give you four tips today. Um, number four on the list is utilize a direct mail service. I did that the first year. That was the first advertising marketing thing that I did. Um, and it did get us a client and that one client moved us on to more clients. So a direct mail campaign is fairly easy to implement. Most cities, most larger cities, or even our smaller one here, have a um, company where you can buy a mailing list. So if you know who your ideal client is, you can give those parameters to the company who makes up these mailing lists and they will help you get the right to the right people. So like what kind of parameters could we you know, could we go to that company and say, we know we've identified our client, you know, they're this age, they're this sex, they're, they go to this kind of, they live in this neighborhood. What other information can they actually take from us that will help zero in so we know when they open their mailbox, it really is a potential client? Well, it could be a zip code. Okay. It could be um, 
a living like here we focus on a lot of second homeowners so they can give you a list of people with two addresses mm -hmm. um, you could do females over 50 with this income and this and live in this area I mean you can get very very specific and you'll get a smaller list but you'll get a very focused list okay. and the other thing that these mailing companies do the direct mail is they offer you bulk mailing discount so that you can do an affordable promotion right instead of paying regular postage you can do a bulk mailing rate so you can take your marketing collateral whatever it's going to be and your designer can can lay it out such that there's a place for an address and the postage provide that to this mailing list company they'll give you the list you decide how many of those people you want to mail to and then they will put the address labels and the postage right on your marketing piece they lick the stamps for you they don't have to lick the stamps they're pre-printed <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so yeah so it makes it really easy we like i said we did that our first year uh, we, i haven't done it since because we found other ways for us that works better but um, just if you're just trying to get your name out there that's a quick and easy way to do it and the return is not real big it's often as little as a half a percent which doesn't sound like very much but depending on how many mailings you send out it could be a significant amount and even if you only get one or two clients you might be able to get enough work out of them to offset the cost that's really your factor when spending money for advertising and marketing is how many clients do you need to get to pay for the cost of the advertising and then how many more, you know, and then after that, then of course it's all gravy after that. Yeah. So with, with that kind of, uh, with that kind of process, just like any advertising, is that a, is that a one and done kind of thing? Oh no. Direct mail, especially direct mail needs to, well, all advertising for that matter needs to be done repeatedly. Uh, we did just once just because of the direction the business went, but, um, I would really recommend that you commit to at least three mailings, if not more. It takes, Statistics vary, but it can take as often as seven times for somebody to see you and remember who you are, which sounds discouraging because seven times I got to get in front of somebody. But it's just there's so much data these days mm -hmm. coming at people that it takes a while for them to remember, oh, yeah, this is what you do. Right. So you need to commit to some amount of frequency if you're going to go the direct mail route or any route for that matter. What can, what can someone expect to, you know, when I think of direct mail, uh, I think of like, you know, postcards. Mm -hmm. um, what can someone, and I'm not going to hold your feet to the fire, but just kind of get an idea, like, what's the cost per piece on something like that? Any idea? I, I, no. I, I mean, it could be, it, no. I have no idea today what that is. I mean, I haven't done it for 11 years, so it all varies. Postage rates vary. The size of the piece that you use varies. Um, the size of your mailing list and how uh, how difficult that target market is to reach can also affect the cost. So really and truly, you need to go and get an estimate and talk. And they're help, super helpful, these people. The direct mail people are super, super helpful. So you can go to them and say, I want to do this. I think this will be good for my business. Help me figure out what the best way. These are the initial parameters of who I think my ideal client is. And they'll help you parse that down into something that will really do some good for you. Now I'm curious when we talk about direct mail, you know, I, I, something that comes to mind, Leslie, is when you're doing direct mail, like you're talking about, you you own that mailbox. In other words, you're not sharing it with anybody, right? I mean, as far as your piece, it's not like, you know, one side is you and the other side is somebody else. No, it generally not. You, you provide the artwork for okay. the marketing piece and it's the way you present it that is yours. Now, that's not a bad idea, though. If you If money is a factor, you may find a complimentary and I mean with an E and not an I a complimentary service to go with what you're doing and they can pay for one side and you can pay for the other and you can split the postage and that's another way to go mm -hmm. I know people who do that with billboards uh -huh. for example one billboard will have one company on one side and one company on another and they they work together in some fashion you know so uh, maybe it would be a party uh, rental service and a caterer could gotcha. do two things together to help promote getting events. You know? would, would this, would that direct mail piece, would that fall into that, what is that thing is called Valpac? Valpac is a different, well Valpac is a different thing and that, Valpac works depending on who your ideal client is again. My ideal client typically does not open Valpac. I tend to throw, my, I hate to say it, but I tend to just like at the, at the curb, 
Yeah. I do my I do my sorting <laughs> at the curb, and yeah. that usually doesn't make it in the house. Well, me either. But however, yeah. I will say that just uh, last week's uh, value pack or whatever it was that came, I actually opened that one and did call one guy out of there and contracted some work. So, you know, it really depends on what who your ideal client is. The people that I market to would never look at Valpac, I don't believe. But the people, but other people will. So it really depends on who you're using. That's where you want to put your uh, marketing pieces. I mean, I guess it's one of those things, Leslie, you know, like Valpac and direct market or direct mail. I mean, they've been around since stone. Because they work. Because they must be, they, they must work, work right? Yeah, so exactly. it's just that, like you said, this is number four on your list. So it's it's not as effective as three and two and one. Correct. But there there is a return on the investment. Absolutely. Cool. And, and like I said, the, the I did it one time. I got one client. It was my very first client. But that client uh, more than paid for the cost mm. of the, the program and led to several more clients. So it's, you know, you can't you have you've got to not be short-sighted when you look at the returns and say I got only one person out of this because it depends on where that person takes you yeah right absolutely so you have to think a little broader if you think putting out a direct mail campaign is going to yield you you know explode your business and yield you thousands of clients it's unlikely yeah very much unlikely right it does work though it is a good way to go it's affordable and I, you know, I like it as a, especially when you're first getting started, but you need, again, we always go back to, you have to know who your ideal client is. And a lot of people have difficulty um, narrowing that focus. And that's one of the things we can help you do is, is ask you the questions that help you get to who you really want to sell to, because um, you can't be all things to all people. You know, in my case, where where my other business is providing lifestyle management services, I had to make a choice early on. Am I going to market to fixed income seniors, or am I going? Because we live in a community of, of, you know, I don't want to say aged, but older, um, mature adults. Mature adults. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, saving me for that. I know how to say it, but yeah, mature adults. Um, so, did I want to go on the fixed income route, or did I want to go on the higher end, biz, You know previous business owners, uh, high-end baby boomers, that sort of thing. And so you have to make a decision because you can't sell to both markets mm -hmm. for the same price point. And if you try to sell at two price points, you're going to end up upsetting one or the other. Yeah, so you point. just can't do that. Gotcha. So that's number that's number four. What's right. number three? Number three is going with promotions. And we talked about this not too long ago when I got all excited about the uh, gift certificate I was doing for the real estate mm -hmm. agents, right? Right, right? And now I'm offering that to anybody who wants to give a gift to their clients. And that's a really good way to go also because the investment is fairly small. The cost to you is fairly small when they, because you're paying cost and you're giving it away at retail. So you actually are, it's pretty affordable. Um, and then it's finding the right person to, to give a, a promotional piece away to. For example, I know you've been talking to restaurants about doing free appetizers on birthdays, right? Mm -hmm. That's a giveaway that work, that will bring in new clients, right? Right. Um, another thing you could do is um, if 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 there's a if your demographic, if your target demographic buys a specific kind of automobile, and you go to that dealer and say, "I want to give you a gift to give as a thank you gift to your buyers of this specific car or this range of cars." that's another way mm -hmm. that you can get it because you're giving it to them for free and there's almost no reason for them to say no. Right. I mean, obviously you need to build a relationship and that takes time, but there's no reason for them to say no. Okay. Right. So finding a way to give, if you were doing a seniors, for example, uh, fixed income seniors, and you wanted to give away something to them that would bring in business to you. Um, my sister belongs to a, sor a sorority where they do tray favors for Meals on Wheels. Mm. So it's possible that you could contact um, Meals on Wheels or the charity and see if they wouldn't pass along something that you wanted to give away to the seniors of value that gets you in front of them so that you could then provide some kind of services or products to help them. Gotcha. Right? So it's kind of, what do we call it? Collaborative? Cooperative marketing. Well, I cannot get that. Cooperative marketing. So this is part of your cooperative marketing plan and campaign is to find a way to utilize and leverage 
your relationships to pass your information along in a way that benefits the person who's helping you, but also helps bring in new business. It's hard, it, it, it's hard Leslie, I think, or correct me if I'm wrong, but it's hard to refuse a gift. If I'm it a is, business if owner, free, why yeah, I, mean, take I mean, if I'm a business owner and you came to me and my ideal client was your ideal client, but we don't compete against each other, and you gave me those certificates, why wouldn't I give them away? It's like, hey, to me, I would think, hey, that's a reason for me to go right. out and physically get face to face with my clients is I'm giving you a gift, right? Right. right. And and having a touch point, you know, you talk about those seven touches. Well, that's true after the fact too. Right. So yeah, I'd want to do that. I think that's a great idea. Well, and I use them as a thank you promotion, right? If you want to say thank you to your whoever buys your services or your products. I'm going to give you a gift certificate with this much value that you can give them as a thank you gift, and it costs you nothing. Yeah. So why would they say no? Right. Most of the time they don't. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's three. That's What's three. two? So two is obviously. Wait a minute. Two. Two. <laughs> no, you need to do that when we get to one. Okay. okay. So two is utilizing social media, and we all know that we need to utilize social media. But the key to that is finding out or determining which kind of social media to use depending on the demographic you're marketing to, right? So younger younger um, adults utilize Snapchat and uh, Instagram pretty much. Older adults like myself utilize Facebook a lot more than the teens tend to use these days. Um, and then I don't, and then professionals use LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So you need to find what demographic you're, again, it always comes back to who's your ideal client because if you want to target your marketing, it is key and critical that you know who you're marketing to, mm -hmm. right? right? You cannot go at this willy nilly, you just can't. Yeah. So, um, so understanding which social media platform your ideal client tends to use more of that's where you want to put your advertising marketing dollars to try to bring in clients from there. When you when you talk about that, let's say like LinkedIn, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, there's that there's that spammy feel, like you know, just because somebody contacted me, it's always like immediately like, hey, thanks for thanks for a connection, Jeff. And now would you buy my stuff? Mm -hmm. I mean, I always just get immediately get turned off by that. I mean, is there? A, I know it's a little off topic, but I think it, it has a place here. Is there a way to begin that relationship properly? I think the best way is to give away um, information of value. So white papers on, we, and we talk about this a lot uh, as a way to get your branding out there is to write articles or helpful how-tos for like the chamber newsletters. Those same things can go on LinkedIn and people will want to read them. And again, you don't have to do a hard sell marketing or advertising promotion to be successful, what you have to do is provide information of value. And if you provide information of value, people will want to read what you offer and eventually, it may not be immediate, but eventually they're gonna to wanna to buy from you because you'll establish yourself as an expert in the field um, or knowledgeable in multiple fields and then they'll want to work with you. Well, you know, on that, on that vein, you know, I do a lot of stuff online and, and there are people that I follow and they're always providing value. And it's almost like at some point they offer something that I feel like I have to buy because they've just, they've given, given, given without really like putting any hard sell on me. It's just like, I feel obligated I hope I, to buy, I, I, right? I, I, well, maybe not, so. I mean, I it's hope, useful. Yeah, I, I hope nobody feels obligated though to buy because we're giving away information. Well, know? I mean by, by the fact that you've been so generous by doing these well, programs yes, and true. doing this, it's like, wow, if she's that way on this, if I were her client, how would it be? It has to be the same. There's some transparency there. So that's yeah. what I mean. It's not like I, I feel like I feel like I'm so guilted that I have to buy <laughs> something. It's just like, you know, to me, that's earning my business. And that's right? true, and that's very true. And I have a lot of people I consult with uh, for, for concierge business solutions where you know occasionally they'll say to me, I can't really afford this, but I'm trying to get this new business, and then I can afford it. And so for sure I'm gonna help that person. And they always come back and buy eventually. So um, you, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of giving away way more than I get paid for, but on the other hand, it, it makes me feel good to help people. Yeah. And so while I won't tolerate somebody who come, wants to come and pick my brain for free for, you know, 
you know, take up all of my time. I will, of course, help somebody who who needs it beyond what they've paid for. So you're willing to give a hand up, not a hand out. Correct. Okay, good. Correct. That's good. a good way of putting it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can, you can, that's a tweetable. Yeah, if you can remember <laughs> that and the cooperative marketing. You know, you I go. got it right that time. You're golden. You're golden. <laughs> so, okay, so that's the top, that's, yeah. a, that's the bottom three. Yeah. So you have, I know you have one that's pretty exciting, and we're going to get Amy to help us on the computer there. I love there. this so one. The last one. Number uh, one. Oh. Jeez. And there's off. X's and O's. They want our X's and O's. I had them stacked so nice, too. You did. I didn't realize so dainty. <laughs> so, anyway. So the number one way to um, target your marketing is to take advantage of online uh, demographic applications. And that, I'm sure there's a number That's of a these. What's I that? know, demographic applications. Well, I, I, I have this one that I like. It's called, I forgot what it's called, city-data.com. City oh, city-data.com. Correct, okay. city-data.com. And I like this because you can put in your parameters for your ideal client, and it's going to show you where those people are mm. on a map, which is awesome. Okay, so I think we're going to show you a map, I hope. Are we? I think Amy's talking. I think Amy's, Amy's trying pulling, to find a map. She's pulling okay, that. Because I, I want to show you. Um, I tend to like to look at income levels because I'm targeting a specific income level for, for myself. But if you, it doesn't matter what data you put in there, it will bring up whatever you're looking for. And so once the map comes up, there'll be shaded areas that show you the demographic that you're interested in. And you can click on it and it will give you a whole bunch of other information about that neighborhood or that city or that area and so for example I was working with somebody back east who was looking for one specific type of client and quickly within seconds I literally had a whole there was a neighborhood of 700 homes mm. that met the criteria that she wanted and wow. I said I would absolutely direct mail every single one of those people send them a package and because of the the uh, income level that they were I wouldn't just do a postcard I would actually do a folder with information and which is much more expensive mm -hmm. by the way but for this particular demographic it was so narrow and there were so few homes in that area I said go for it just because if you get two or three you're you know it's gonna way more than pay for yourself yeah so I really like that how are we doing Amy okay. Jesus, just keep talking. <laughs> well, I you know, need you, to see the map. Well, you know, when you talk about that, we, we talk about it, it's, uh, you know, we call it ABM, account-based marketing. In other words, there's a finite number of people that, that fit that demographic. So when you do something like that, you're making it more personalized. So when you said, hey, you, instead of just sending out this general letter, you're, you're sending out something much more, I think, meaty, if you will, and personalized when I receive it. Because you can afford to do that because you know, hey, there's only so many of those people in that market, right? So Well, and you know that the cliche, which is true, by the way, is find a need and fill it. So if you identify your target market and you can find them via one of these demographic applications, when you click on that space, it actually pops up with a whole bunch of their spending habits mm -hmm. and um, maybe the kind of, I don't know, the kind of cars that they buy, but there's a bunch of detail in there about that specific section, slice of that area. Okay. Okay. And that allows you then to tailor the marketing collateral that you're going to send to them oh, okay. to address potentially issues that they might have. For example, if you are doing this work, some kind of work in New Jersey and the people that you're targeting all work in New York, they have a long commute. Mm. So do you have a product that makes that commute easier? Do you have an app that can save them time while they're on their commute? Is there um, a service you can provide for them before or after while they're gone for the day? Like mm -hmm. if you're a dog walker, can you take their pets out? Yeah. You know that those people need help, Yeah. right? So you need to identify not only the market, but what can you do for them or what product can you provide for them that will help them um, make their life better. So it's solving a problem, isn't it? I mean, at the end of the day, it's solving a problem. Right. Well, right and that's the goal has. of all of us in business, right? We all provide a product or service that solves a problem for somebody else. You know, do you ever, as Amy's looking, getting this pulled together, I mean, is it ever a situation where, like we do this a lot, where 
you know, there's a there's an ascension, if you will, of a, a client comes in at this level and you move them along, and it and it's it's almost like you're you you're helping them understand there's a problem that they have that they didn't realize they had, and That's then true. you offer the solution. That's true. Right? It like, happens all the time. Yeah, like as you said, let's go back to that dog walker. You know, you know, can you imagine? You know, when a dog is left or a pet is left throughout the day. What does that do? And, and then maybe there's some statistics, like 62% of dogs left it in their home more than four hours a day continuously tend to have these kind of you know, emotional, physical things, right. right? And then your solution is your service. Right, right? to take, come and visit them, to give them some personal attention, take them for a walk, make sure that they get some interaction, physical mm -hmm. interaction during the day makes them happier. Yeah. I mean, it would make me happier if somebody interacted with me during the day. So, <laughs> did you find it in city-data.com? City-data.com. Yeah. Yeah, but we I sent you a screenshot, so um, I was hoping we could put that up because I pulled up one of the locations, but that's fine. If you go to city-data.com and you click on um, any number of criteria, you, I put a city in first of all and then say income levels or um, lawyers or whatever it is you're looking for, it will show you on the map by color where these places are. And they, it doesn't always just go to that city. It shows you all the surrounding areas. I was working with somebody in Springfield, Illinois, which I think was one of the screenshots that we had. And she actually was looking for a specific uh, demographic and was thinking that she was going to market in this area, say. And when we when it came up, it was all over here. Mm. Okay, so we just saved her a pile of money by targeting where to spend her advertising marketing dollars. Yeah. Because that's the other key here is that you do not have an unlimited amount of funds to do this. No, no small business owner does. And most of us eventually get to the point where we say we're going to spend so much a year towards this. And, and once those dollars are gone, they're gone, usually. So you need to make sure that whatever you're going to spend on is something that is truly going to bring you a return. Yeah. You know, for example, I love magnets on cars because there's some statistic that says 20,000 people a day will see a magnet or a billboard, right? They're drawn to it. They're drawn to it, yeah. And they, they can, they'll see it. So that's, a, that's almost free advertising. Mm -hmm just by driving around with it, because a set of magnets costs about $100. So if you drive around with magnets on your car or a, or a wrap, you know, a lot of people are going to see that. Yeah. Right? Point. So um, there's different ways to turn, but that, to me, that, I just want to clarify, magnets and billboards actually do more to build your brand than they do to bring in business. Okay? I mean, I've in actually, my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I've actually, uh, there were two situations for me personally. One was um, replacing my pool guy a few years ago because I was very upset with them and there just happened to be a pool guy there and the other was my gardener. And both of them came from, I pulled up behind somebody and, saw, and I saw it and I'm like, I dialed it right there. I pulled over, I dialed it right there and they're now still, well, one of them are still with me. Well, you know, I don't even have a phone number on my car. Intentionally. Intentionally. Oh, intentionally. Yes. You don't want anybody calling. No. <laughs> no, I do want them to call, but I want them to be interested enough that they look us up. Oh, uh, okay. And so I feel like if somebody wants to take the time to look me up, they're far more likely to be my actual client than somebody who's just going to call off my car. Perfect. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because my pricing is on my website and I want them to see who we are and how we operate and what we do so that I don't get a bunch of calls just because somebody parked behind me. Yeah. So that's why I do that. But but I've been in business for 11 years and I can afford to take that route. So. Yeah. You know, one of the things, uh, and while Amy's pulling that up, is you talk about the advertising, the cost for advertising. A lot of times we talk to our customers and we counsel them from like, you know, what is the lifetime value of your client? And most people don't talk in that vernacular. They think, okay, if that person buys this, it means I'm gonna make X number of dollars. But how often do they buy that product? And one of our clients, uh, each one of their clients has a lifetime value of $25,000. So the question comes up is like, okay, well how much are you willing to spend to get a new client? Right, and that needs to be 
a consideration for whatever you choose to do. Yeah, so I mean, as an example, let's say for instance, hypothetically, that client says, well, I'll spend $10. Are you kidding me? $10 for 25,000? Even Vegas. I would do that all day long. Yeah, no kidding. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, are you willing to spend $1,000 for that client, right? Mm -hmm. To make 25,000, I'm in. Right. right, I'll do that all day long, twice on Sundays. So it's one of those things. I think that's a consideration. Like when you talked earlier about, you know, the the expense of doing direct mail, it's not always a big return, but it's one of those things. If you say, well, wait a second, if I get a client, like as an example, you know, you say a lot of your clients have been with you for years, right? right. Yeah. And right. then you have to kind of put the numbers in and say, well, wait a second, they've been with me. My average client, let's just say they've been with you five years, or they, let's say they've been with that person for five years, and let's say on an average. They spend a thousand dollars a year with you, so that's five thousand dollars. That's the value of your client. If you're not willing to spend mm. twenty or thirty percent of that on attracting a new client, I think there in life could there in lies a potential problem. Well, and you know you don't always know you, you don't know what's going to work. Okay, and and before I remind me about the car wash, but before I go to the car wash, I want to. That reminds me of the song. <laughs> I want to uh, reiterate what uh, Jeff said at the beginning is that I do a newsletter um, every other week for Concierge Business Solutions and in that I try to take the topic that we have here and expand on it so there's more information than what we're able to give you here. What You can't get it? No. That's okay, no worries. So. Um, and one of the things that I do in the newsletter about this topic, because it just came out on Tuesday, is to talk about how you are an ideal client mm -hmm. and how people see you. And I talk about why your, your mailbox and your email box and your phone blow up when you first start a business. A lot of people are surprised mm -hmm. by that. It's like, I just, I just decided to start a business. How do all these people know? I tell you how you know that in the newsletter so mm -hmm. or how they know that so if you want to understand how you become part of somebody else's ideal client sign up for the newsletter you can do it either by clicking on the link somewhere here on Facebook live to get the white paper that where we talk kind of summarize what we've talked about today or you can go to conciergebusinesssolutions.com and sign up through the contact us page and I'll put you on the list so that you can get this kind of information but I want to go back to the car wash so um, when I first started my other business, I didn't know where to market either, right? And somebody approached me about putting up one of those ads at the car wash, mm, yeah. right? Um, this is before I even thought about, I knew who my ideal client was, but I really wasn't targeting as well as I should have. So I put an ad up at the car wash, and they're expensive. Oh, know? really? Oh, yeah. Well, at the time, they were $150 a month, which I, you know, as a new business owner, that's pretty steep, I thought. And we go for 11 months and not one phone call. Not one phone call the first year. The 12th, I already told him to cancel, right? The 12th month at the 11th hour, I got a phone call and signed up one client from that car wash ad that paid for it five times over. <laughs> so you just don't know what's gonna work, right? But still, I think one, one uh, client only is not uh, adequate. That's part of it. Would you, with that, and then I want to wrap it up, is is that one of those things where you say, maybe having a diverse attack? You know, like, okay, like as an example, you gave four examples. I mean, if you could afford it, would you would you do a little bit in each, in each one well, of I those? Well, I did. At the same okay. time, I did the direct mail, and I did the car wash ad, which I wouldn't recommend, depending on what kind of business you have. If you have a male oriented, if your target market are males, you know, in a certain age bracket, then, yeah, then I would do it. Cause you know, if you have a product or service that attracts men, that's a good place for it. It's like Costco. Have you ever noticed that Costco sells almost only men's clothes? A lot of men's clothes. I noticed they only sell women's clothes. Oh no, they have some women's clothes, but if you look at the, the square footage, that they that they a lot to women's children and men's men mm. by far outweighs in the square footage. Interesting. And you know why? Because men will buy clothes at Costco. Because the perception With, is inexpensive and or it's easy. Yeah. You know, they, men aren't shoppers. No. So they'll just pick it up, and say, "Yep, that's the right size," and they'll go. 
women are a lot more discerning. So there's there's um, psychology behind targeting your demographic. Mm -hmm. And while the, the um, car wash ad in this example worked out for me because the one we got was really a good client, um, it could have been nobody or it could have been somebody that absolutely wasn't my client. So you really need to focus on that. So because Amy couldn't, um, I, for some reason it wouldn't come up for her. So it's city-data.com and you can pick a um, city and then in a second she'll get a map of that city and then you can tailor down your demographics but i really do encourage you to um, send me an email or click below and get the white paper for this and we i will turn around and send you the um, newsletter that we just did that talks all about target marketing expands on this topic and gives you a better feel for how how you become part of somebody's uh, ideal client which is interesting all by itself with that service you're talking about it what's the fee on something like that it did nothing it's free free how good is that free. so speaking of free we need to free leslie up because she's a busy lady leslie thank you so much for My this pleasure. great information and thank you for joining us this is another episode if you like this make sure to please say uh give us a like and maybe share it with somebody else in uh this space we'd really appreciate it yeah and also get on over there and get her uh, get her newsletter download this white paper and check her business out i think you'll be surprised that uh, she can help you out with that yeah we really want to make a difference for you and help you be successful so give us an opportunity to do that all right leslie we'll see you next week Thank you. On X's and O's with Leslie Spore. Bye. Bye-bye. It's like crashed our...